Today in lab, we're going to start to work with operational amplifiers. So you learned about them in class. They're triangles on a schematic, and they have two inputs and one output. So they have two power supplies that may or may not be in the in the schematic diagram, depending on what you're working on. So a real op amp, one from the 1980s, looks like this little box right here, this gray box. It has eight legs on it. This is called an LF351 op amp. It was made by National Semiconductor which is now part of Texas Instruments. And once again, we're looking at our Electron Kinetics Eagle 2 amplifier. So I'll give you a quick tour of what's in the schematic. It's way past EK307, and it probably is daunting, and we're certainly not going to test you on it. But most schematics usually go from left to right, then higher potentials are on the top of the page and lower potentials on the bottom of the page. So to orient you, the signal input is right here. That's where you plug in say your preamplifier or your music system to your amplifier. And then the output is over here on the right. Then there's a 50 volt power supply that's connected along this rail and a minus 50 volt power supply connected along this rail. Now down here, this represents the power supply. So wall plug, power switch, thermal cutouts, power transformer, bridge rectifier converts the AC to DC, Two gigantic capacitors, those were those really huge capacitors that looked like coffee cans. So this is an old one right here, or in that schematic right over there. And then there's a point right here that says plus 50 volts, and that's a symbolic connection to the plus 50 volts up here. It would have been really messy to draw wires going up there. So I know that if I see a plus 50 down there, and a plus 50 up here, those are electrically connected. Same thing with the negative 50. And the negative 50, those are electrically connected. So other important symbol is the ground symbol. It kind of looks like a segmented arrow. So that's my ground from the center of my transformer. You can see there are a few ground points in different places on the board. One here at the input, one at the output. So those symbols represent ground. So we plug a signal into the input. There's a 10K ohm resistor in parallel with the input. It goes through a 3.9K to our inverting input for op amp. So op amp has this kind of neat circuit right here that does a voltage level shifting. Then it goes into these two transistors. And these are like a bipolar pair of transistors. In other words, one is better at having current go in one direction and one has better at current going in the other direction past EK307, but so they complement each other. So when one's going up, the other one's going down, so to speak. And these invert the phase, like they multiply it by minus one. And then the signal carries on here, and it goes to this pair of transistors. These are called driver transistors. And those provide a high amount of current to the output transistors, which are these four right here. And the output transistors are connected through these small resistors. They're 0.27 ohm resistors almost directly to the output terminal. So notice there's a fuse in there. There's a 15 amp fuse between the transistors and the output, which is the speaker terminals, to protect the speakers against an amplifier failure. So other parts of the circuit, there's something in here called a bias circuit, and that provides a proper amount of current for these transistors to operate when they're just sitting there and there's no signal going on. And the, the bias makes the amplifier perform better which is still past this class, but just something to note. So, and then we showed briefly before that the output, there's a, a wire going down here, and this is the feedback wire that goes to the input. And that feedback signal goes to my positive input on my op amp. Now I could simplify that schematic quite a bit. So we have an op amp right here. We have our signal input, which is right there, that's our N, our positive input terminal. An 820 ohm resistor going to ground. Then our feedback circuit. You can take out a lot of the other parts for now and just throw in a 20 kilo ohm a 20 kilo ohm resistor. And then we're gonna draw it as a box, all those other stages of amplification meaning all these transistors over here. We're just going to put them in a box. And we're going to have a resistor there that goes to ground. 
inside the box. And we want to put the sign on it. We'll call that VRX. And on the other side, got a dependent voltage source. I think I'm drawing the wrong symbol for that, but it is a dependent voltage source. And then an output. So this resistor here is RTH of the circuit. We're going to say that's approximately 0.1 ohms. And this one right here we'll call 19 kilo ohms. It's this resistor right here. And then the gain of this is going to actually be negative, and that's significant. And I'm going to just draw it out here. So the, the voltage on that dependent source is going to be K, say minus K, actually negative K times VRX. This is the output of our amplifier over there. Then our feedback loop connects back here. So this is a very simple diagram. And this right here, I'm jumping over that wire, and that's my negative output terminal, and my speakers over there. Now if we look really closely at the circuit, and it's a simple feedback circuit. It's actually a non-inverting amplifier. So I could simplify that down a little bit more. We could really lump all of this stuff into this op amp right there, because they're in what we call a cascade. One follows the other one. It has a certain gain, and it's negating. Now, an ideal op amp has infinite gain inside it. Right? We learned that from class. And the LF351, I think, has a gain of like 10,000 or something like that. So it's like a gain of 10,000 in this op amp, we'll just say for easy math. This one has a gain of 19, and that's kind of a guess. So this K right here equals 19. So we could put those together, and we could see clearly that this is dominating. So we could kind of fold this whole mess right here into that op amp, and then if we wanted to analyze the circuit. And here we could switch the signs around a little bit. It would go, I would notice I switch my positive and negative signs on my op amp. There's my 820 ohm resistor going to ground. My 20k feedback resistor and my input right there. That's the in and that's the out. And we can solve that. You learned how to solve that in class. Right? That's the non-inverting op amp equation. Where you're just gonna have, let's see if I could do this right, 1 plus 20k over 800 and, or 0.82k just for easy math right there. So that's gonna be like about like 24 or something like that. So that's gonna be about a gain of about 25. So there we have it. Yeah, you know, we just Kind of on the back of the envelope or on a whiteboard, just simplified the circuit down, and we came to the conclusion that our Eagle amplifier is really just a non-inverting amplifier that has a gain of about 25, if I did that math correctly. And the other thing we didn't speak about but is important is that the R Thevenin of this is much lower than the op amp. The op amp R Thevenin is about 200 ohms. The R Thevenin here is about 0.1. So that means that this output right here is capable of driving a speaker. And that's what all that stuff, all these transistors here are doing in the circuit, is they're increasing the voltage swing capability and lowering the Thevenin equivalent resistance. A loudspeaker has a low impedance. It looks like an 8 ohm load, perhaps. And so we know if we had an 8 ohm across the 200 ohm Thevenin of the op amp, things would not work out very well. So all these transistors in here, they have a low voltage gain, maybe of about 19, but it's got a huge current gain because now we can drive really low impedance or resistance loads because of all these transistors in here. But from the point of a signal processing though, you know, this ideal op amp right here basically encompasses everything that's in that schematic.